Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now, two of my favorite cars to take for a blast down a B road come from Hyundai, the i20N and the i30N. But by all accounts, I've been missing a trick because apparently the pick of the bunch is actually the car that's parked behind me, the Kona N. Now, before I start to talk to you about the car, you will notice how I said Hyundai at the beginning of this video. The very first Hyundai press car I got was an i30N, actually. And when I did that video, like most Brits, I called it a Hyundai. And I got so much grief in the comments, mainly from the non-British followers I had saying, you're saying it wrong, it's not Hyundai, it's Hyundai. So I changed the way I said Hyundai. And from that point on, I've always called it Hyundai. Then guess what? I start getting grief in the comments, mainly from my British followers saying, you're saying it wrong, it's Hyundai. Well, I'm ahead of the curve because Hyundai UK now have a press campaign going on social media, telling us we've been saying it wrong for all of these years. And it's not Hyundai, it's Hyundai. So I was ahead of the curve. Hmm. Take that internet. Anyway, the Kona N. I find this a really, really interesting car. First up, as a platform, you've got pretty much every engine choice you could want. You've got petrol, diesel, hybrid, full battery electric, or you can go for this, the hot one, the Kona N. Underneath the bonnet is basically the same engine you find in the i30N. It's a four pot, two litre, produces 280 PS and just shy of 400 Newton meters. And that's coupled through an eight speed dual clutch semi-automatic transmission. Front wheel drive, limited slip differential. You can see the format here. It's basically just designed to go down a B road as fast as possible. And it really does that. It's, it's quite remarkable actually, but more on the driving very shortly. Styling wise, I'm not sold on the front end looks of this car, I'm afraid. It just doesn't do it for me. I've never really got the Kona. It just is a bit incongruous to me. I'm not a big fan of this top light bar here. I think that's mainly daytime running lights here and then headlamps at the bottom. I just, I'm not sure. The N version of the Kona gets these three little nostrils here. I'm not so sure they actually do anything. They might be fake, but they look quite cool. The rear end of the car, however, I really like. Now, technically this is a, uh, a compact SUV, but I just really struggle calling this car an SUV. To me, an SUV is a big four by four family car, five or seven seats. That's what an SUV is. For me, this, this is more like a jacked up hot hatch. But the rear end of the car, really like that styling. Come and take a look. I guess the rear of the car is dominated by two things. Firstly, this massive great big wing on the top with a high level brake light. I think that looks great. And in this color with the red contrasting against the privacy glass and the black trim and the roof rails, that sets the car off for me at the back. And then you've got this diffuser with two of the biggest exhausts ever. And they don't need to be that big. If you look on the inside, the diameter of the pipes much, much smaller but they're just massive. It reminds me a little bit of a kind of Focus RS size. They are huge. Sets the car off beautifully. The car is really quite snorty when it's in sport or N mode, but it doesn't pop and bang nearly as much as the i30N did, or certainly the car I drove a couple of years ago. And I'm guessing that's got a lot to do with modern day noise and emissions regulations. Really, really nice back of the car. Pretty good size boot. Um, for its size, it's got a false floor. Under there, you've got a space saver wheel. None of this tire foam stuff. You've actually got a spare wheel. That is the first car I've had on test for as long as I can remember that's actually got a spare wheel in it, apart from the Defender I had over Christmas, which had a full-size wheel stuck on the back. So that's pretty cool. Let's jump on the inside. It is a bigger format car than a hatchback, so it should have a bit more room in the back. Having said that, I'm not so sure that that's necessarily going to be the case. Need to be able to unlock it as well. Bad form, Greaves. There we go. Oh. Yeah. 
there's not a lot of space in the back here. You would think it would have loads more space. Now this seat is set for me. Uh, everyone always says, how tall are you? If you watch the channel regularly, you will be bored of me saying this, but I'm six foot three, 34 inch inside leg. So this seat's quite a long way back, but honestly, there isn't a great deal of space in the back here for me. I've got a, you know, some power sockets in the back and the seats are nice and comfortable, but it isn't very spacious if you're an adult. Kids will be fine. Isofix in the back. Let's jump in the front and talk about, if I can get out that is, talk about the spec. Just extricate myself. Whoa, there we go. Before I start talking about the interior, I want to talk to you about price because I think that's really important. Bearing in mind all of the performance we've talked about, this car in the UK is just over £36,000, £36,320 to be precise. And there are no options that you can choose apart from paint. And there are two different levels or prices of paint. The most expensive is 565 quid. So you're basically, you're not gonna be spending more than £37,000 on this car. So there needs to be some compromises somewhere. And those compromises are, a little bit of plasticky materials in here, but I'm gonna forgive it that because the seats look great and they're very comfortable. I do have a bit of a challenge with driving position. For me, if I put the seat in the correct place for my legs and my height in the car, I've got just a bit too much stretch in my arms. I want, this, I want the, the steering wheel to come to me just a little bit. So I, I do feel like I'm at a stretch when I'm driving the car. Uh, everything is driven through there's a, a main TFT screen there. I've got some proper buttons. So heated seats, cooled seats, bonging um, uh, are all on proper buttons. Um, all of my climate controls are on, on proper buttons with rotational dials. And then I've got a set of little buttons here, quick menu buttons to go into there. On the steering wheel, there are three very important buttons we'll talk more about when we're driving. I've got two pale blue buttons. I've got the magic N button on the right hand side that puts the car into N mode, which basically turns everything to the max. And then the left hand one, I can configure to do a number of things. In fact, there's three or four different buttons on here. I can go into the menu and can configure them to be shortcuts, which I quite like. We'll talk more about the drive modes and this special red button when we're out and about on the road. But all in all, it's a really comfy place. It's got an old style traditional handbrake, great for handbrake turns and quite a nice feeling gear selector. I can go into manual override, just pull the gear selector towards me and I've got paddles behind the steering wheel and they are very responsive. So in order to be able to talk about these buttons, these two in particular, I think we go and have a bit of a drive. Now the weather today has been terrible. It's been raining all day. I had to wait till at least like about half past 12, one o'clock before I could even get the cameras rolling. The light's starting to fade. We haven't got very long. Let's get out and quickly get some driving done and talk to you more about this car when it goes down a B road because it's pretty special. Okay, let's start off driving in normal mode. It is very, very wet. It's been raining all morning. There's a lot of standing water around. It's a no cameras on the outside of the car kind of review. First thing to say though, in normal mode is the suspension is firm, really, really firm. In fact, I'd go as far to say as in normal mode, the suspension is as firm as you would find in a lot of hot hatches, sport mode, or even track mode. It's really firmly sprung this car. The steering has quite a good weight to it, and, and you just know when you get in the car, it means business. Even maneuvering the car around a car park, you can get that little wheel skip, the Ackerman effect that you get in much higher end cars. I get it in my Porsche when it's cold, and that tells me straight away that the geometry of the front end of the car is set up to be quite pointy. The other thing I'd be interested to find out is in the i30N that I drove in wet conditions, that car suffered a lot with wheel hop. So when you put the power down, the front end of the car would kind of skip up and down. It really struggled to put it down. It was improved a great deal in the i30N Fastback that I drove, which is actually my favorite variant of the i30N. And when I had the i20N, didn't really suffer from that too much. 
but in normal mode it's a really nice very pleasant place to be there's not too much road noise the tires are a bit noisy the um, exhaust isn't shouty or in your face it just feels like a kind of reasonably powerful family car nothing too edgy that's where these buttons come in so first up we can go into N mode and I'll demonstrate that because it's quite spectacular so as we're coming into this corner let me go into end mode I'm going to go into manual override and just demonstrate something the gear shift is super quick It just pulls you out the corners. Here we go. Can you see that? <laughs> That's me bouncing up and down. It's, um, yeah. It reminds me actually of, I haven't driven the new Civic Type R, the new, new one. But the one before that, I remember driving that and it was just bouncing me out of my seat. And that is the problem in N mode. The suspension is so firm, it's actually quite jarring. I think it would do your back in after a while. Let me just slow down a minute and catch my breath. So, N mode turns everything up to the max. Engine, suspension, transmission, exhaust noise, everything. And on a track, it would be brilliant where you've got nice, smooth tarmac. But honestly, on a normal B road like this, for me, N mode is so harsh it's almost unusable. So as well as making the suspension way too firm, end mode also turns the traction control off. And on a day like today, that can lead to a few traction issues. So what you can do is go into the menu settings and set up your own custom setting and that's what I've done I'm going to turn it on it's called custom one and what I can do is go into the options just around this corner by the way is a big flood so let me just traverse that one you can go into all of the options through the trees see if there's anything coming slow right down look at the state of that bad boy and you can set engine steering suspension transmission the limited slip diff the stability control systems, exhaust sound, even the head-up display, you can change the various settings. What I've done is I've left everything to the max because Enmo does firm the steering up beautifully. It gives a really lovely steering feel. But I've put the suspension in its softest setting and I've just put the traction control on its medium sport setting. And that should make things a lot better. Already, I can feel the car a little bit more compliant on these bumps. I'm not bumping my way around, but I've still got the super aggressive upshifts and that electronic limited slip diff helping me out of the corners. The steering weight is really firm. It's almost like it puts a dampener on the steering, but in a front wheel drive car in wet conditions like this, that's a characteristic I like. I don't want a light floaty front end in my hand on a wet day. It pulls out of the corners brilliantly. You can feel the front end scrabbling for grip, but then I am trying to put 280 PS through a front wheel drive car in the rain. But honestly, the, the way it deals with that power, the poise and the balance on the roads, it's just a brilliant thing. I love the i20N, that's only 200 PS. I think I said in that review that, you know, why would you want any more? You can really rev the car out. The downside of having a bit more power is if you do that in this car, you end up going much quicker. Um, and, you know, obviously getting on the wrong side of the law and on a day like today, you're going maybe a bit too quick for the conditions. But the brakes are good. The downshifts are really quick. I've speeded up the gearbox on this custom one setting. Honestly, brilliant thing. up 
here because there's a N Grin button. This little red button here gives me an extra 10 PS for just 20 seconds. Not that I really need it today. Honestly, it's so wet. That front end is such a good test this corner, uh, this hill. It pulls into the next gear like a trooper. It's just doing so well. Front wheel drive in the wet round the corners. Oh wow. Get it. It's a brilliant thing. Once you get it set up right, now there is a a halfway mode between end mode and normal you can just go into sport and the car has its default sport setting which is pretty good to be honest it's got a softer suspension it still firms the steering up it's just not as hardcore i think probably you drive around in that quite a lot but when you found your bit of b road when you really wanted to push on go into custom one use all the settings have the car set up just so and you're going to have an amazing time go to a track stick it in end mode and you can have a really good time now there is just one thing to do before i conclude this video and that's try launch control right now then let's give this launch control a go shall we it's active oh, that sounds good a bit of skip <laughs> It's really, <laughs> it's really struggling with these wet conditions. That, you could just hear the car skipping a little bit. That was that wheel skip that I mentioned when I drove the i30N. Now this car's dialed that out a lot. You used to get that on an i30N a lot. This it doesn't seem to do it so much, but when you really want to accelerate to the maximum, when that launch control is active, it does skip a bit. That's a cool feature. Well, on this dank and dreary day in the UK, what are my final impressions of the Kona N? Well, I, I was told it was a great car and I've obviously watched a couple of reviews and, and read what people said and spoke to a few friends of mine that had driven it. And I, I only expected good things, but it's an absolute riot for the money, for kind of your 36,000 or so pounds. It's a lot of bang for buck. And I know there's always comments that, you know, oh, it's a lot of money for a car, and it is. But when you compare it with other similar cars in its category, you get a five year warranty with a Hyundai. And I think 36 grand for this car is a really, really good, good bang for buck. I think N mode is track only for me. Um, the suspension is pretty firm and I know it won't be for some, but the way they've dialed the front end of the car in, the diff works so well, the um, traction control systems work so well, even on today's road conditions, which are about as, as taxing as they could be for a front wheel drive high performance car, it's dealt brilliantly with that. NGS mode is a bit of fun. I've got a similar thing in my Porsche, and to be honest, I always forget it's there. <laughs> you think, oh damn, I could have used that during that overtake, but up the petrol head hill climb with that extra 10 PS dealt with it brilliantly. Absolutely mega car. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I'm not a massive fan of the styling, but boy does this car drive well. Anyway, I'm gonna call it quits there, go home and get dry. I hope you enjoyed that one guys. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film guys. You take care, drive safe.